One of the hardest things about gardening is just choosing what to grow, especially food crops. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and I discuss everything gardening so that you can become a better gardener. Today, let's discuss choosing food crops, and I'll give you my list of what I think are the 10 best. One of the reasons it's so hard to choose what to grow is because there are just so many options to choose from. There are many, many varieties of many, many plants, so how can you break it down to deciding what's going to grow in the garden? Well, for me, I decide on 10 different factors, and based on how the plants fit into these 10 specific ideas, well, that helps me choose what to grow you can bake it down to the same essentials as well. The first factor is just planting what you eat. And this sounds very simplistic, but there are so many of us that see a picture in a catalog or hear somebody talking about the plants they grow and we decide to grow those same plants, even if it's not part of our normal diet. And I've grown many plants that I really never intended to eat. But if you've got limited space and you're really growing for the reason to give your family food, well then only grow the plants that you're going to eat, especially your kids. If you've got picky eaters, don't waste your time trying to grow something that's probably going to end up in the compost pile. Choose the foods that you're going to eat. Consider choosing your food crops based on their nutritional value. There are just so many vitamins and carbohydrates and proteins that you can get from the plants that you grow. Consider root crops, beets, carrots, and potatoes. They're packed with nutrition and so easy to grow. It's no coincidence that potatoes are grown all over the world. And even though it led to a terrible famine, Ireland had a good reason for growing a lot of potatoes. It's almost the perfect food. So do consider growing that and make your selection of the other plants to grow based on the nutrition that you're hoping to get for you and your family. Choose food crops that you know will grow in your garden. It can save you a lot of time and a lot of mistakes. And this sounds very basic, but again, it's an error that many of us make. I would love to grow mangoes, but I know that I can't. Instead, I grow things like garlic. But in the regions of the world that can grow mango, they can't grow garlic. So look at specific recommendations from the gardeners in your area, because if they've had success growing something in an area close to your garden, then your garden can probably have success with that same food crop as well. You're welcome to experiment. Maybe try something that would normally grow in a slightly colder region, or maybe in a slightly warmer region. But basically, to save yourself some turmoil, plant what you know will work. I choose plants based on their ability to provide me seeds at the end of the season. This is really a good way to become self-sustaining because if you can collect your own seeds and then save them until the following year, you never need to worry about buying seeds again. And what this means is choosing the crops that are open pollinated not hybrids. Hybrid seeds you really can't save and grow the next year, but heirloom varieties, open pollinated varieties that you know will come back the same every single year, well then you can save those seeds and you'll be able to grow those exact same plants year after year. And you'd be surprised at how many plants you can save the seeds from, things that you might not even have considered. You can save carrot seeds and cilantro seeds. You can certainly save tomato seeds and cucumber seeds. So bring this into the factors that you use when deciding what food crops to grow. Choose plants that will be very productive in the space where you grow them. These are the plants that you can get a big harvest from over a great period of time. Plants like zucchini, which is notorious for continuing to give fruit even when we're tired of it. And consider cucumbers. You pick a cucumber and another one grows, and it keeps going throughout the season. 
One of the best is tomatoes. Indeterminate tomatoes just keep growing and just keep producing. Every day you can go out and pick tomatoes. Especially if you have limited space, try to choose some of those food crops that will give you the greatest production within that space. Think beyond harvest day when you're making your selection. Choose food crops that store well. These are the type of things that you might harvest in the summer, but you continue to eat for many months after that. The reason that winter squash is called winter squash? Well, you harvest it in late summer or early fall, but it stays good through many months of the winter. It stores well. Things like dried beans can store for years. Root crops, parsnips, turnips. These are the type of things that are stored in root cellars for months and months. So bring this into your consideration when you're choosing your food crops. What can you grow and harvest and then continue to eat for a long time after? And in a similar vein, consider choosing food crops that you can preserve this is different than storing. This is food preservation by using pickling or dehydrating or freezing. It's ways that you can take your harvest and enjoy them for many months afterward. I pickle my beets and my garlic and my green beans and my cucumbers. I still have pickled green beans that are a year old and they still taste wonderful. I make jam and jelly from my fruit. Fruit spoils pretty quickly. It doesn't store well. But if you learn how to preserve it, you can enjoy pickled fruit or a nice jelly or even frozen strawberries for a lot longer. Choose the foods, learn to preserve, and you've got a great opportunity for choosing some of your food crops. Consider growing food that would be expensive to buy in the grocery store. I grow a lot of herbs because it's really expensive to buy one of those little packages of herbs. But I can grow a lot of herbs for very little cost. And when I dry them, they last a long time. Tomatoes. It costs a lot to buy organic tomatoes. But if you just get a few seeds, you can grow organic tomatoes yourself and save you that expense. So look at your budget. Look at your grocery list. And if there's something on there that you spend a lot of money for, well, think about whether that could be an option in your garden. And that way you can grow things that you would normally buy. And it's great for your budget. I've alluded to this earlier, but choose food crops that are easy to grow. It should go without saying, but it's a very common mistake that gardeners make. They'll choose a plant that's just too hard to get to harvest. Well, don't do that. Choose the plants that are easy. Garlic is one of the easiest. I put the cloves in the ground about six months ago. I still have about another three months before I harvest. But all I did was just put it in the ground and water it and wait. What can be easier than that? Zucchini is at the top of the list as well. You put a seed in the ground and you stand back. There's a lot of those squashes that just grow with almost no work whatsoever. And the reward is great. So don't work hard, work easy. And that's how you can choose some of your food. Before I get to my top 10 list of what I recommend growing is this last factor. And I shouldn't have to mention this one either, but I've made this mistake so many times that I have to include it on my list. And that's to select foods that taste good. I shouldn't have to say that, but I've grown so many things that just don't taste good to me or to my family that I've wasted the time, the money, and especially the space in my garden. So be creative, experiment a little bit. But when it comes to choosing the foods that you're actually going to eat, well, then select one that you're actually going to enjoy. Why go through all that effort, all that labor, if it's not something you're going to enjoy when you sit down to eat it? Those are the 10 factors I use in deciding what food crops to grow. 
And in compiling this list of the 10 best, I looked at what plants can actually meet the most factors in deciding to grow them or not. Number 10 on the list are berries. And this includes all kinds of berries. I've got strawberries growing in this bed. I've got raspberries behind me. I've got blackberries over there. And these are the kind of foods that are very productive and very easy to grow. They come back every year. They're easy to preserve. They taste great. And you can save a lot of money. It costs a lot to pay for organic strawberries, but I'm growing them every single year and it doesn't cost me anything at all. Number nine on the list is beets. And you could put in your own root vegetable that you prefer, like carrots or turnips. But a root crop like beets stores extremely well. It preserves well. I love my pickled beets. It's packed with vitamins and nutrition. It's very easy to grow because these root crops can be started before a lot of the summer crops. They can be grown in the spring and the fall. This is something that should definitely find a place in your garden if you're looking for good food crops. Number eight on the list are cucumbers. They taste great. They're easy to grow. You can make them into pickles, which will last for a very long time. Along a trellis like this in a bed, I could probably put a couple dozen cucumber plants and harvest all through the growing season. They're not packed with nutrition, but if you eat them with the skin on, you're getting some really good vitamins. Number seven on the list is garlic, primarily because of the taste. All these other foods might taste good, but with a little garlic when cooked, they'll taste better. And you can save the bulb and plant the cloves year after year, which means it costs nothing to grow the garlic. It's extremely easy, as I already pointed out. It grows very well in my region, it preserves well, it stores well, it's got a lot of great benefits. It's even nutritional, something you should consider. Number six on the list is potatoes. As I've already mentioned, their nutrition make them just about the perfect food. They're very easy to grow and grow in most regions of the world. I grow potatoes in buckets and containers. You don't have to devote a garden bed to them. They store extremely well in a nice cool location a few months very easily. Number five is winter squash. And I particularly like butternut squash. It tastes great. It's packed with nutrition. It's easy to grow, especially up a trellis. You can grow a lot of plants. Save the seeds, keep growing them year after year. They can cost a little bit at the grocery store, which means you save money there too. They store well into the winter, and you can actually make them into pickles. Winter squashes are just one of those things that can't be beat. Number four on the list are beans, and this includes all kinds of beans. Pole beans, bush beans, broad beans. They're packed with nutrition. They're very easy to grow. If you save some of the seeds at the end of the year, you can plant them the next year and continue that process costing nothing. They taste good. They're the kind of thing that many people grow in their garden, so it's already probably something that you can grow. They preserve great. As I already mentioned, dried beans can last for years. So you should definitely have beans in your garden. Number three on the list is kale. And you might not agree because you don't like the flavor, but especially when cooked with a little garlic, the flavor improves greatly. You can actually preserve it. I dry my kale into crunchy chips, and I really like the taste of those. It's very easy to grow. In fact, it can actually grow throughout the winter. With a little bit of protection, I can harvest kale almost every month of the year. It's packed with vitamins. And it's the kind of thing that if you buy it in the store, you're probably going to pay more than you'd like and you can grow it in your garden for almost nothing. Number two is zucchini, or for my friends in the UK, courgette. In my opinion, it meets nine of the 10 factors. It is so easy to grow and so productive that it's something I grow every single year. In fact, I usually grow too much of it. 
If you're just starting, if you have limited space and you want a good food crop to grow, well then zucchini is the crop that you should start with. The one you've been waiting for, the best food crop, tomatoes. There's no coincidence that tomatoes are the number one crop grown in American gardens. In my opinion, they meet nine and a half of the 10 factors. That half point is for storage. They don't store extremely well, but they can be stored for a pretty good period of time, especially if you pick the right variety. As to the other nine factors, they knock it out of the park. They just taste so good. They have the great vitamins. They're so easy to grow. They grow well in my area, they grow well in your area. If I could only choose one plant to grow in my garden, it would be tomatoes. And if you're just starting out and you think they might be too difficult, well, get that thought out of your mind and start growing tomatoes. What do you think didn't make the list? There are a lot of other plants out there that were close. But if you think something that's your favorite should have made the top 10, let me know in the comments below. And I might do another video about it in the future. And if you want to become a better gardener, well then subscribe to the Gardener Scott channel and click on the bell so you can see those future videos. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening.